Jamie, we're not we're not on yet, are we? Yeah, we are. Oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> so I should start then. You can any time you want. Okay. Yeah. I'll play the first movement of the third suite. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to, to God, God forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to the, to the God, God of my joy and gladness. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked. For you are the God of my strength. Why have you put me from you? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. That I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness, and on the harp I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the Holy One, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to God, source of all being, incarnate word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. I will go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace your servant Bernard of Clairvaux, kindled with the flame of your love, and became a burning and shining light in your church, grant that we also may be aflame with the spirit of love and discipline, and walk before you as children of light, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, everything that the Father gives me, everything, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that, his, all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Please be seated. Well, tonight we are actually on the eve of the Feast of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Uh, he was a great uh, saint in the church, a really wonderful, interesting guy. Uh, we have our, uh, our own St. Aelred of Ravaux up there, right, right in our window right there. And he was, uh, he was a Cistercian, which was what uh, Bernard of Clairvaux was as well. We're not actually going to talk about Bernard of Clairvaux tonight, and in fact, the, the person I was going to uh, commemorate tonight, uh, we're not going to commemorate him either because uh, Stephanie is here, and it's Stephanie's last mass before she heads off to, uh, to, to Ohio, so uh, we're actually going to cover someone that is actually also, uh, there's an anniversary of her passing this, this coming week, and somebody that I love to commemorate, and I think you would enjoy her very, very much, so this is just for you. I know Sandy knows about her. I don't think you know about this particular person yet. So we're going to talk about a wonderful, fascinating, very eclectic person by the name of Simone Weil. Mm -hmm. We love Simone Weil. You will love Simone Weil, trust me. You will love Simone Weil as well. Okay, and Weil, uh, in this sense, Simone Ve is W-E-I-L, W-E-I-L. She was a philosopher, she was a mystic, she was born in 1909, died in 1943, so we're going to hear about Simone Ve. The quote comes from her. Today it is not nearly enough merely to be a saint, but we must have the saintliness demanded by the present moment, a new saintliness. Simone Ve was born in France in 1909. Her parents were well-educated, non-religious Jews. 
From her early childhood, she gave evidence of qualities that would characterize her later life. A brilliant mind, a steel will, and an acutely sensitive conscience. She studied philosophy at the elite École Normale Sucre. I don't know if I got that right, but you, you get the sense of what, what, what is that, the, the, the normal, the superior. 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 The superior normal school, essentially. It's a teaching school. What? It's a teaching school. It's just, the, yeah. school yeah. There you teachers. Go. Uh, so it was quite elite, according to this, uh, in preparation for her teaching career. So there you go. But her intellectual interests ranged over many fields, including literature, history, political theory, and mathematics. For a time, she was engaged in the world of radical politics. But she became strongly critical of the authoritarian tendencies of Marxism and the sectarian squabbles of left-wing intellectuals. We're gonna pause there. Uh, they kind of breezed over that a little bit, but of course, she was of that generation. She was in France in the 20s, and, the, the, and it was a time to be a Marxist. If you were not part of the right wing, you were part of the far left wing. So you were probably a Marxist or someone associated with, with the far left wing. Not very different than our own time in many, many ways. So. Uh, so she had, she had somewhat, some issues with the extremes here. They taught in a series of high schools where she was regarded as, as an idiosyncratic but popular teacher. She got herself into some trouble, however, by trying to divide her time with teaching in a labor college and also engaging in trade union activities. So you can just imagine how interesting that must have been. Feeling a tremendous need to share the experience of the working class, she took a year's leave of absence from her job to work in a series of factories. In 1936, she began, uh, she, uh, she, uh, in 1936, she again left her teaching to join the Republican cause of the Spanish Civil War, where she served with an anarchist brigade. So of course, the, the Spanish Civil War, you know, here she was, somewhat of a leftist. Of course, what do you do in 1936 when the Spanish Civil War was going on? You go to Spain and you join the Republican cause. And then she doesn't join the Marxists, she joins some anarchist brigade, which is even more fascinating. And I don't even know what the anarchists would have been fighting for in this particular revolution, but you know, that's their thing, not ours, so we don't have to worry about it. They're all long dead, so it really, and they lost the cause, they lost that war. So um, her life was probably spared by an accidental injury that forced her retur to return to France. Vey's life was marked by many instances of her impulse to sacrifice and to share the suffering of others. In retrospect, it is possible to interpret her various intellectual and political explorations as steps on a deeply spiritual quest. Nevertheless, a significant turning point in her life came in the late 1930s through a series of experiences that brought her latent spiritual inclinations to the fore. While watching a religious procession in a Portuguese fish, fishing village, she felt the conviction arise within her that Christianity is preeminently the religion of slaves, that slaves cannot help belonging to it, and I among others. Now in this sense, she of course is talking like a Marxist. She is relating to the Marxist cause, the workers. This is for the workers, the people who are in the trenches. Later. In a chapel in Assisi, where of course St. Francis lived, uh, she felt for the first time the compulsion to fall on her knees in prayers. Now remember, she is a non-religious Jew at this point, and she's having these weird mystical experiences, a religious procession in Portugal, now being in Assisi, where St. Francis lived. And then, in 1938, came the experience that marked her forever, quote unquote. She was spending Holy Week at the Benedictine Monastery in Solomé, following the liturgical services. At the time, she was suffering a particularly devastating round of headaches, a condition to which she was prone. In the darkness of the chapel, she recited the poem, Love, by the English mystical poet, George Herbert. Now, if you know me, I quote George Herbert a lot. I love George Herbert. George Herbert is actually even quoted in the window for my mother up there. Uh, and all thy bones with beauty shall be clad. I love George Herbert. So she, uh, she started to recite this poem by George Herbert Love, trying through a tremendous effort of attention to identify the pain she was suffering with the passion of Christ. In this effort, she suddenly felt that Christ himself came down 
and took possession of me. Again, a non-religious Jew, here she is at a monastery in France, and she has this mystical experience of Christ. From that time on, her thinking became increasingly Christ-centered. She resumed her study of philosophy, history, and science, but now her angle of vision was trained on the measuring of God's intervention in history through the Incarnation and the Cross. She immersed herself in the New Testament, attended Mass, studied the mystics, and brought herself, as she said, to the threshold of the Church. To the point, that is, of, of struggling for the rest of her life with the question of whether to seek baptism. And yet, she did not cross the threshold. And that is the really fascinating thing about Simone Weil. In 1940, as a Jew, she was fired from her teaching position by the Vichy government. She went to Marseille with her family and sought work in the countryside harvesting grapes. And just to be clear here, at this time, of course, the Nazis had invaded France. France was divided in two, essentially. So the northern half of France was, of course, occupied by the Nazis. The southern, Fran southern part of France was this Vichy government, which was uh, Henri Pétain, I believe, was the president of, of the Vichy part of France. So they were sort of uh, friendly with Nazi Germany, but they weren't occupied France yet. They would be soon. So Jews were somewhat safe at this point. They wouldn't be for long. Um, so she went there, she went to Marseille. In 1942, she left France and made her way to America. Instantly, however, she regretted the move, feeling her place was back in France, sharing the suffering of her people. She managed to return as far as England, where she contributed her services to the Free French Organization. Of course, as a Jew, she wouldn't have even been able to get back into France at this point. Um, but her efforts to find a way of getting back into occupied France were rebuffed. In the spring of 1943, she collapsed at her desk. She was hospitalized with tuberculosis, a condition that might have improved had she been willing to cooperate with her treatment. However, she insisted on eating no more than was available. Under rationing, to those in occupied France. So she stopped essentially eating. She died on August 24th, uh, 1943, at the age of 34. There is no question that Simone Weil considered herself a Christian. Nothing that is Catholic, she said, nothing that is Christian was alien to her. And yet she chose not to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Convinced that she was thus obedient to a vocation to be a Christian outside the church. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. To place herself at the intersection of Christianity and all that stands outside Christianity. Now, I'm going to pause there because there's a lot in those statements. A lot. So, she chose not to be baptized because she wanted to associate with all those people who were outside the church. And there's a lot of people outside the church. As a non-religious Jew, she would have understood there were a lot of people outside the church, including a lot of baptized people who are outside the church as well. She wanted to feel the affinity to her depth. She essentially wanted to straddle both worlds. Fascinating, a fascinating vocation. Um, I cannot help wondering whether in these days when so large a proportion of humanity is submerged in materialism, God does not want there to be some men and women who have given themselves to him and to Christ and who yet remain outside the church. Absolutely amazing. And this is so radical for this time. Think, late 30s, early 40s. People weren't talking like this. Nobody talked like this. People don't talk like this now very often. Uh, she could not bear the thought of separating herself from the immense and unfortunate multitude of unbelievers. There were some reservations that held her back from formal conversion. At heart, she was attracted to the pure spirituality she perceived in Greek philosophy and in the Hellenistic dimensions of the New Testament. She was in equal measure thoroughly repulsed by everything contaminated, as she saw it, by the spirit of imperial Rome, a territorial, legalistic, and nationalistic spirit that she de detected in the Catholic Church as well. And again, what are those things? Uh, territorial, legalistic, and nationalistic. What does that sound like right now? 
Wei was by all accounts a difficult and complex person given to categorical and exasperating judgments. There is much in her writing that shows a distasteful disregard for bodily existence. This and her philosophical repudiation of the Old Testament are symptoms of a tendency to Gnosticism, which had led some to question whether she was not really farther from the Orthodox, Orthodox Christianity than uh, even she supposed. Nevertheless, there is a rarefied integrity to Vey's life that made her one of the most compelling religious figures of our century. She represents a type of non-institutionally sanctioned sanctity, an engaged mysticism that takes into account the pathos and the human condition and the particular horrors of the modern age. One thinks of her in connection with another French maid, uh, Joan of Arc, who also died among the English. Like Joan, she defied the wisdom of the world, clinging to her vision of truth in a spirit of utter purity, uh, obedience, and a, uh, and a humility so extreme that it bordered on arrogance. I love that particular phrase more than anything else. She had a humility so extreme that it bordered on arrogance. There's something so paradoxical in that little statement alone, and I just love it. If I could strive for that in my life, I would. That arrogance seems to win out. Anyway, in any age, she would have uh, she would have pursued her vocation with the same determination, spurred on by a private voice, her own or another's. And I love um, Ellsberg capitalizes another with a capital A. I love that. In any age, one feels she would have been she would have burned at the stake, whether of her own or another's devising. She's a fascinating person. If you have not heard of her, look her up, read about her. She's got some really great, uh, some great writing. I think she was in her 30s when she died, and she, we're still talking about her now, 70-some years later. Uh, fascinating, fascinating woman. Um, her, uh, her, no, people didn't talk about her for about, mm, I'd say a good 10, 15, maybe 20 years after she died. And then all of a sudden, her work started to come out, and. Uh, you know, back in the 60s, it was really a very, very open time to be exploring someone like Simone Weil, and she has now become very, very popular with, uh, with a lot of us Christians who are maybe on the fringes of some things in our lives. She's kind of a patron saint of us. Uh, they did gloss over that whole, uh, that whole thing about her death where she, uh, she was only eating what she was rationed. It's come out more recently that she just stopped eating. She was an anorexic. Um, yeah, the, there's a lot of demons in Simone Weil that uh, are really very difficult to read about. Uh, she, you know, she wasn't perfect by any sense of the word. She wasn't a saint uh, any more than any of us are saints, of course. Uh, but she's so compelling and interesting and. Just when you think you have her figured out, you don't have her figured out. And that's what I love the most about Simone Weil. Uh, so I wasn't going to cover her because we've covered her many times on a Wednesday night. But Stephanie, I knew you'd appreciate Simone Weil. So, and, and you appreciate Simone Weil too, Matt, because uh, you love anything French, I know. So, uh, and she's... Not she, anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some things, right? There's some things, I'll lie. But she, she uh, captures in many ways that intellectual uh, strain of thought that was going on in France at that time, uh, you know, the, the Jean Paul Sartre and all of that. She kind of represented in many ways a lot of that. Uh, and I, I like that about her as well. Uh, and yet, she didn't fit into that either. She didn't fit into any of the categories that were expected. Sort of like all of us here at St. Stephen's in a lot of ways, which is part of the reason we're all here to, to in many ways. I'm going to close tonight with a prayer for Simone Weil. Uh, again, she's just a wonderful person, and I'm so happy we were able to commemorate her tonight. Let us pray. Oh God, by your Holy Spirit, you give to some the word of not wisdom, the others the word of knowledge, and to others the word of faith. We praise your name for the gifts of grace manifested in your servant, Simone. And we pray that your church may never be destitute of such gifts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Yeah.
If you will please stand, and on page four, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers to our loving and all-accepting God, saying, Hear our prayer. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. For the church, for this holy gathering, for St. Stephen's, and for the people of God in every place. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an outpouring of your spirit upon us and upon this congregation, that we may grow in holiness and vitality. Holy God, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who follow Jesus our Savior, striving in our own way to love God and love each other as equals. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all peoples and their leaders, for our nation and its leaders, for us during this time of upheaval and division, and for justice, mercy, and peace in the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. For the victims of racism, violence, and any form of discrimination, that justice and equality may prevail. Holy God, hear our prayer. For all those who are affected by coronavirus, that they may find relief, healing, and recovery. Holy God, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, for those who are dying, and for all who are in need of prayer. This evening we pray especially for Josh, Darla, Tom, Rose, Joshua, Brian, and Greta. Now we pray for those in special need, especially Michelle and Baby and the Simonson family. Holy God, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for those who have died. We pray tonight especially for Janine, for Grant, for Jim, and for Michael. Holy God, hear our prayer. For our own prayers, repeated either silently or loud, I invite you to share your prayer petitions at this time. Please feel free to do so. Holy God, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Stephen the Martyr, Blessed Simon Vey, and with all creation, let us offer ourselves and one another to you, the living God, through Christ Jesus our Redeemer. Holy God, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have adopted us as your heirs. Accept all we offer you this day and give us grace to live as faithful children. We ask this in the name of of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. And on page five, let us confess our sins against God and one another. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us for our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. <clears throat> peace be with you all. Uh, please be seated. Just a few announcements before we continue with our service. First and foremost, as you probably have seen ad nauseum on Facebook anyway, because I've been posting a lot every single day, the labyrinth is done, and it looks absolutely fabulous. I was talking to Stephanie before Mass tonight. I have tried walking the labyrinth many times over the almost 13 years I've been here at St. Stephen's. 
I don't think in any of those years I actually ever completed a walk on it. This, today, I did. And it is an absolutely amazing experience. I just have to say, uh, I, it, it's not at all what it was like when I was trying to do it before. It is so great seeing it, but it's so great walking. So I'm always encouraging people, come on down, at least walk it. it you don't have to know how to do it, you just walk it. It's an experience in and of itself. So feel free to do that because it is really wonderful to see it as it is right now. And even just driving by, it looks incredible. It really, really does. It needs a couple of more rains to uh, kind of wash away some of the dust, but uh, it, is, it is really wonderful. So uh, thank you to everybody who helped with this project, who uh, not just in the renovation, but helped with it 20 years ago when it was beginning. And, um, and here we are now. So thank you for everybody who's been doing so much to make this uh, a reality and, and to let it be what it is right now. We are doing the rededication and the blessing of it on September 13th. Uh, that will be outdoors. So even if you're uncomfortable coming to mass that day, uh, you can still come to the, the rededication and, and blessing of it out on the lawn. So uh, be considering that as well. Uh, Stephanie is here, and of course, this is her last mass. Stephanie, you're leaving on Friday, right? So uh, it is great to have you. We said our goodbyes officially on Sunday, but you said we're just going to say our goodbyes again tonight. So uh, it's been great having you with us at St. Stephen's. I'm not going to get emotional. I promise I won't. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, but thank you for everything. Matt, uh, I know that uh, school's going to be starting up pretty soon, so we might not be getting music. Kind of a couple more times. A couple of more times. Okay. Very good. Well, uh, we are enjoying the music. It has been a real highlight of this summer mm -hmm. and uh, it has meant a lot for us in this very weird, bizarre time. Thank you. It's been good for me to do, to do this, keep playing, play for people. Yeah. Well, it's, so, you know, it's, it's a perfect example that when things get dark in society, music pro provides a light and uh, it just makes things so much better. So thank you for providing that light for us here at St. Stephen's. Uh, I'm trying to think what else, what other announcements there. I don't think there's a whole lot going on outside of uh, the labyrinth, which you've been hearing way too much about. But um, yes, I think that's about it. So uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank uh...
Our service continues on page six. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, our holy God, source of life and fount of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us together into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. Recalling your great goodness to us in Jesus, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and this cup of salvation. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Jesus our Savior. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, this is the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this supper. And at this time, let us pray for all those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. Lord Jesus, be present with those who long to be here and receive your holy presence in this Eucharist. Come spiritually into their hearts, and let them know your healing, loving, and life-giving presence, and never let them be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
on page nine, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.